Hi everybody, I'm Kathleen Dell at Iowa State or Game Specialist. It's June 10th, 2021, and we are here for our second year of our rolled uh, no-till organic experiment. And this year we're doing corn into hairy vetch. And I'll introduce Levi Lyle, our farmer cooperator. Um, and we're very grateful to NRCS for supporting this project. And um, I'll just ask Levi some questions about the field and what we're doing today. So. Can you just describe what's going on um, in this field and what we'll be doing today? On this trial plot, we had organic soybeans last year uh, that we had roller crimped down. And then um, we have um, hairy vetch, which we seeded uh, in the fall. Um, there's a little bit of volunteer rye that's coming. And so that seems to be pretty evenly dispersed among the hairy vetch. And we're hoping that that is a benefit in helping hold down the, the hairy vetch. And then we're going to uh, roll it down and plant it. And then uh, we'll assess it to see if we can uh, manage this no-till organic corn crop with no further nitrogen inputs. And the, the little bit of difference from what we did at Neely Kenyon Farm um, Iowa, for Iowa State was we rolled first and then we planted the corn. And at this site, Levi's going to plant first and then come back with a roller crimper on top of that. Um, the vetch is in full bloom and it's um, probably just going to be starting pods but we're going to roll it anyway because the, the rye is definitely past anthesis which is a really good time to roll it and the rye is a volunteer rye from the site from last year which as Levi mentioned we, we're hoping that'll keep the uh, cover crop down a little better because it has that extra biomass from the rye. So you ready to start? Planning? Yeah, yeah, and if I were going to add anything additional, it's that um, the goal on our farm is tra to transition the conversation away from um, yield and talking about profits and instead talk about um, reducing inputs and remain as profitable, if not more profitable. So that's what we're doing out here by um, reducing the, the external inputs and using the fixed nitrogen and uh, making fewer passes through the field the goal is to then assess whether the profitability is um, the same or more than it would be if we had those inputs. Exactly. All right, let's get planting. So here we are in the corn trial, organic no-till corn on July 28th. And um, again, I'll be asking Levi a few questions about um, comparing what we did here was Flaming the hairy batch after planting versus non-flaming. So we'll walk to that site in a second. So we're starting with where uh, Levi did flame. So can you explain, Levi, the whole process you did here starting from planting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think I mentioned that first week in June is when we planted it. And we uh, roller crimped the vetch same day, right after planting. So then um, we came in here five days later. Um, while that vetch was still green, hadn't dried out yet, and we flamed it. We didn't want to just burn up all the vetch because that was going to be our mat through the season. So we um, flamed it down. It was a broadcast flame, so the corn hadn't yet emerged, and we were able just to broadcast flame and um, take care of any of the weeds or the vet head um, that were still there. And then on the other part of the trial, we didn't do the flaming, so we're comparing the two. And what about the economics? What are you thinking about? So, that? Um, at twenty bushel, twenty-five bushels an acre for the hairy veg. Twenty-five that, pounds. Twenty, yeah, twenty-five <laughs> pounds. So we've got about seventy dollars worth of hairy veg out here um, per acre. Um, so we'll be looking at the economics to see how that compares to um, other ways that we could fertilize organic corn. Um, but um, we spend much more than seventy dollars per acre. Uh, traditionally on um, organic corn crops for um, manure or the other forms of nitrogen that can be used. So uh, we're, I'm optimistic that the um, hairy vetch is possibly a less expensive means of getting the nitrogen into the profile. Correct. And we'll also be looking at soil quality. Um, what we found in our research is when you have cover crops of any kind, but particularly hairy vetch, you should see an increase in organic matter and carbon that's sequestered. So um, that'll be good if we could put a dollar value to that too. I don't know if you looked into 
dollar values of carbon, but it's an upcoming thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that long-term approach is what um, my organic system plan takes into consideration. So um, we're definitely looking beyond, you know, even a decade to say what is the sustainability of the system we're using. Okay, thank you. Let's go to the non-flamed. All right, so here we are in the section of the organic no-till corn that was not flame. And Levi, can you talk a little bit about the weed presence here compared to where you did flame it? It's noticeable that there's more foxtail coming. Um, the flaming really helped uh, address the, the weeds that were just already present there with the hairy vetch. And so being able to address that at the time we rolled basically rolled and before that corn emerged helps. That's what we should see. And we'll be surveying for this today, but you can see a little bit of corn borer damage if you want to come in a little closer on it. Um, you can see the frass there. So we'll, we'll be taking samples today to see if there is more corn borer in the section where you did not claim. Because I didn't notice it in the section where it was claimed. So that'd be an interesting comparison to pick up too. For some reason, corn is more attractive in a no-till setting and could just be all this extra uh, host material around that brings in corn borer, but um, we'll be looking at that too. But was there anything else you wanted to add to this? I'll be really curious to see how the yield compares in the two. Um, I'm, I'm holding in my mind some of the variables that were out of my control. Rain came in about the time that we could have flamed the other trial a second time and um, I'm left wondering if we could have removed some of that pressure right around the base of the corn plants uh, with what I would consider um, the usual flaming time when corn's um, 8 to 10 inches tall you'd flame it um, a second time. Um, it would have helped. It would have definitely helped the pressure out there. So we'll see if the yield's affected by the pressure that's there and what we get off of it. All right. So we'll return when we get the yield. Thanks. Today's September 10th. It's the conclusion of the project, and we're taking biomass and nitrogen content samples with the silage. It'll be about three weeks until we harvest this once it's dried down, and at that time we'll assess the yield of the crop. Since next year is going to be uh, a rotation to organic no-till soybeans, we're going to go look at the soybeans over here, which are in the larger field, and uh, show you what that's doing this year. These are the organic no-till soybeans. We came in here with two bushels per acre of rye in late October, and then we roller crimp that rye down to plant these soybeans in the one-pass approach we use. The soybeans have done really well despite a dry summer. Some late season rains have caused the caused the pods to really fill out. If you look here, you'll see that the, uh, the rye mulch is still present, providing weed suppression. We were also able to come in here with two passes using electricity, using a uh, weed zapper implement, and that has really helped to um, hold back the more succulent weeds. So we suspect this will be between 30 and 50 bushels per acre. We'll come back to you in a couple weeks and uh, let you know the results.